Greetings one and all, this is Rhythmworks and welcome to my channel with yet another countdown to Uncharted 4 with T-49 days, 14 hours, 46 minutes and 13 seconds featuring the first episode of the making of Uncharted 4 series, Evolution of a Franchise. Enjoy. You know, with just the inception of Uncharted, we wanted to create a playable summer blockbuster. We've always rooted it in, it's a character-driven, story-based, action-adventure shooter. Underneath all of that, there's meaningful story moments, there's lovable characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Too long, boy. Oh. The heart is Nathan Drake and the cast of characters that surround him. This was somebody who was vulnerable. I remember the first time that we did a punching thing, and I said, hey, what if, it, what if he, I hit him and it hurt? You know, I said, I punch people, it hurts. So it was one of the first people who hit and go, ah, you know, and when he fell from a height, it knocked the wind out of him, and he would struggle to get up. That's what Nate is at his core. He's just a normal guy trying to do the best he can, and he just keeps falling into these extraordinary circumstances and, you know, has to dig his way out of them. And everybody wants to be that guy. You want to be that adventurer that's digging up treasures that have been lost to history and time. You want to see what kind of problems he gets himself into and how they're going to get out of it. And you get to be part of that adventure. Like, how am I going to get them out of that? With Uncharted 1, you know, that was our, our first game on the PlayStation 3. We moved away from Jack and Daxter. It was a brand new IP. And it felt like we really have something to prove here. It was like create a character that moves believably, that has a realistic weight, but also is fluid and responsive. And that is just about the most difficult thing you can ask. Drake was kind of like, he was kind of a little newer to the game. Uh, he was still figuring himself out, and so was the studio in lots of ways. We were still trying to figure out what Uncharted was. The cutting edge part of Uncharted was the process by which they decided to capture the content. And a lot of it was trial and error and trying to figure it out and trying to gain experience of doing that. All the games that I'd done before were all you go into a booth by yourself and you do the lines one by one. And I thought that's what it was going to be. And Gordon Hunt, who was the director, came over and I'd known him for a while and he said, this is what we're going to do. You're going to start out here and you're going to go and I said, whoa, whoa, Gordon, what, what are you talking about moving around here? This is a game, right? And he said, yeah, it's motion capture. And I went, motion what? And I think, you know, especially 10 years ago when this started, that was something that people never saw. And we had these kind of, this idea of the game was going to be three pillars. It was going to be combat, traversal, and puzzles. And now it felt like with Uncharted 2, we really, now we really have something to prove. Let's tell a more complex story. Let's get deeper into who this character is. Let's show some of his flaws. Let's get into some of his vulnerabilities, his insecurities as a character. But at the same time, we wanted to up our set piece game. And from a couple of pieces of core technology, mostly Drake's interaction with moving objects, that sort of spawned these, these big set pieces, like the, the train uh, and the building that collapsed. Uh, but they weren't the focus. They weren't the, the core tenant. We didn't start saying, we're going to make amazing set pieces. We started saying, we're going to make core gameplay that's really, really solid to play. By the time we got to three, it was like, okay, how do we take all of that and go bigger? Last of Us to me was refreshing because you could get away from that spectacle. You could think more on like a very intimate character level and gain an experience with something that, again, as a team we were uncomfortable with. We've never done something like that before. We've never tackled a genre like that before. We tried to take those big over-the-top set pieces and we tried to couple them in with pivotal points in the story so that when a big event happens to our characters or their relationships with those characters that we really wanted to play those out. The ideal for us is that when you're playing the game and the character is going through an emotion on the screen, that we've made you feel that emotion. One thing that we really learned uh, from The Last of Us and kind of experimented with and got really good results from is just allowing the player to just poke around in an intriguing environment. 
you know, talk to people, have these kind of side conversations with your buddies or with your allies and stuff that give the player this slow time to really make themselves a part of this world. Hey, you like that? Huh? Hey, tower. If it's solid, come on, it's a, it's a lemur. Come on, come say hi. Something that we really felt like we learned a lot on The Last of Us is the relationship between Joel and Ellie and how it's not just Joel doing everything, but Ellie is a big part of it as well. And, and it feels so satisfying when she helps him out at the last minute, right when you need it. It really resonated with us, and we really want to incorporate that type of feeling as well with the characters that you travel the story with. We want them to be there with you and, and helping you and you guys working together as a team. After making The Last of Us, I think that that influenced a lot in making a more personal story with Uncharted, but at the same time, you know, we, we love Uncharted. Uh, this is still the Uncharted that you've always loved. It's just there's more layers to it now. So moving back into the Uncharted world is kind of like coming home in a way and creating a very kind of brighter, larger world to play in. It's similar in some ways to, you know, Nathan Drake being drawn back to the adventure, being for us to like go big again and go like, big spectacle, big explosions. While trying to like take on all the lessons we've learned throughout the games that we've worked on and try to tell a more human story within that. Uncharted 4, perhaps as a result, is gonna be the best balance of bombastic and over the top and exciting adventure and these smaller moments, these small intimate moments that end up meaning just as much, that end up having sticking with us for just as long. I think there's a lot of responsibility for us to be true to what has come before with Uncharted. The last three games were these amazing adventures, and now that we're doing the fourth one, which may be the final chapter, there's a lot of respect that the characters have earned. There's a lot of um, emotion that we've invested in these guys and gals over the years, and a lot of hard work that's gone into to make it all possible. We feel like there's so much invested from all the people here that have been working on Drake and the, this whole like world for a decade. We want to do ourselves the service of actually tying this together. And I think there is some responsibility there to take it seriously, to tell the story of these characters honestly, because there are so many people that, that takes such joy in us that our responsibility is to then make sure that they're getting the best possible game we can make. And that's constantly as a team, you're seeing how every department pushes the other one. And we strive for nothing less than perfection. Even though we'll never achieve it, we're constantly shooting for that. And that's the thing that drives us, is we want to make something that we can look at and be proud of and say like, man, this is, like how cool we made this. Every pixel on the screen, like somebody here, there was energy that went into every single pixel on that screen. That's awesome. Pre-order the PS4 bundle. PlayStation. Watch the rain.